All right. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Motivation Theory Run Club. So we're lap 19 now. 19 episodes. Whatever you want to call them. How is everybody? Check to make sure we're live. We good? We good on sound? What's going on, Frank? Recycle on Wednesdays. Art? Tasmania running? David? What's going on, everybody? Good to go. All right. All good. Oh, man. So I hope everyone is doing all right. I think it's been a couple weeks now. I think it's been uh, two weeks, roughly, since I had a live hangout. It's been too long. It's been too long. I have been extremely busy. Baseball is in full effect. And uh, no... It's not me that's playing baseball. It's my son. He's on a travel baseball team. And if you have any kids that have been in any kind of travel sports, um, not that we're doing a ton of travel. It's just what they call it. Uh, it's been practicing three times a week and games on the weekend. And now it's games during the week, games during the weekend, uh, two separate leagues playing in tournaments. It's, it's crazy. So that's what I've been consumed with, consumed with. How's everyone doing out there? What's going on, Frank? Recycle on Wednesday. What's going on, everybody? If you're here, say hello. That way I can greet you. Art, welcome. So in Texas, that's. Trying to figure out what that... I don't know what that means. Tasmania running, how are you? Good afternoon, good evening, good night. <laughs> exactly. Posner, dude, what's going on? Larry Lawrence, hello. Welcome to the stream. What's going on, everybody? Give a couple minutes. Wait for everybody to get in. It's been a while. Definitely been a while. I went, and I think when I started, the, I went and put the stream in. Like I always have to go in and put the stream in ahead of time, so it launches at the right time. And for some reason, I think I did it at the wrong time. I think it was, it was scheduled at like 3-something today, and I had to go in and change it. Huge pain. Doing this thing through YouTube, this live stream is just not intuitive all the time. So, over the last, um, I guess it's been three weeks, if you guys saw my video that I released uh, today, um, I think I've run two times in the last three weeks, and, and now I'm just getting back into it. I've taken off. You know, I wasn't feeling great uh, about two weeks ago. Maybe a week. I can't, I'm losing track of time now. COVID brain, the whole pandemic brain. Um, so I had taken off a little bit just to take a small break, and then I started not really feeling very well, and uh, so I decided just to kind of rest. Uh, I didn't know if I wasn't. I don't think I'm ever. Got, I never got into a point of overtraining or anything like that. Uh, but uh, I went out for a run one day, and it was hot. It's been hot in Virginia, and I've been running in heat every day I run. So it wasn't something I thought was a huge, huge issue. And uh, my my heart rate was just spiking all the time. Just, I mean, I could, it was a miserable run because I couldn't even run. It was so – my heart rate just kept going up and up and up and up. And uh, so I decided to take another week off after that run. That was a failed comeback, and so yesterday I thought I'd try it again. Went out on the trails just to kind of get out of the sun. It was still 100 degrees, 44% uh, above humidity, and I felt fine. It was hot, but I didn't have uh, issues, so I felt fine. So I'm, I'm going to start working out again. Uh, not sure what was going on uh, with me, but you know, better safe than sorry, and uh, I'm back. So I decided also to uh, kind of put a you shouldn't trust the HR monitor when it's hot. Yeah, I don't go completely off that. Like, so I'm, I'm taking in a couple other factors. I'm, I'm, I'm how I feel is one of them. It's just a data point. I mean, I probably weigh that data point more than anything because um, I have the heart rate strap and I have the, I mean, I have the Garmin uh, 945, Garmin Forerunner, and uh, it seems to be pretty accurate. So, 
it, it, it was it, it worried me because I didn't feel great and so I just figured that it was probably related to it um, but I usually will kind of probably rely on the heart rate monitor a lot more than I should uh, Frank said you shouldn't trust the HR monitor when it's hot Positor 2 said I've been doing early early runs to avoid the heat 55 degrees this morning that's a that's a good temp I like in the 40s 40s are my favorite um, but yesterday, you know, my heart rate being measured was a lot. Every time I'd look down at it, it was like in the sick one sixties high mid one sixties, which to me is it's high. And anybody that's paid attention to my heart rate and training, you guys know, I don't, my heart rate doesn't normally run that high. Um, but I know it was probably either the watch is not super accurate or it's just the heat. A spike in my temperature and a spike in my heart rate and I've, and I've seen that happen in races in the past where my heart rate is, is spiking in it I didn't feel bad so yesterday I just pushed through it um, obviously I kept it uh, kept it safe but uh, there was a hill at the end of my workout that is a super steep hill it's probably a quarter mile and I ran up that and I know that I hit 170 above 170 I think my max heart rate supposed to be like 178 or something like that so it's it's pushing high and it hurt. It was burning. It was burning my lungs. It was a burning that I, I'm not used to feeling very, very often. Frank said, there's something about blood pooling near the skin, high temperature. That means it gives artificially high rates. That's probably very, very true. Um, very, very true. Tasmania said the chest strap should keep it reasonably accurate. So yeah. And so I don't know a ton of behind the technology. I probably should get smarter on that. Uh, but I always just assume that between the watch and the heart rate that it that it's relatively um, uh, accurate. But I don't know. I mean, I'll have to look into that and see how accurate it is. But it seems to be. Ponser 2 says, about how many miles per week are you looking at getting back into a routine? Um, this pandemic, which I'm going to start talking, you know, the whole quarantine stuff, just talking about mindset and, um, kind of stuff I've been battling and I've seen a lot of other athletes. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I want to get into a routine. I do have a plan that I was supposed to be starting. Actually, I did start, but then I hit the the pause button on the training um the reason i want to go with that is because it's easier for me to follow rather than getting caught up in my brain and, and thinking uh, just getting off track when i'm when i'm training so i was going to do the um that 50k plan that i've been talking about for quite a while um which i think for a while has been the 30s per week um typically when i'm in this maintaining mode in years past i've stayed uh, in the high thirties, maybe low forties. And I, I feel good at that. Um, I do have a plan at some point to hit, um, close to 70. I just want to hit it just as a personal goal, just to hit it a couple times and, uh, or at least once. Um, so we'll see. I don't know where my main, main, t I usually hit between 30 and 50 miles. That's usually my standard, uh, mileage. Uh, and it's usually based on how I feel. Frank says, like if you try to take a, like if you try to take a max HR in the heat, it's pretty easy to get to 200, even though it isn't realistic. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I don't 100 percent trust that that where my heart rate was measuring yesterday. That's why I didn't put a whole lot into it. Completely agree with you on that. But I want to look more into the science about that stuff, and uh, I think you're you're probably pretty right. Art. Wishwood says, Motivation Theory, what's your favorite go-to song in starting a morning run? Uh, Art, I do not listen to music when I run. Ever. Maybe if I'm on the treadmill, but even then I don't. Um, I don't race with music, so I don't train with music. Um, I'm a bit big advocate of trying to replicate racing conditions, or worse than racing conditions, so the racing conditions are a little easier. Um, that's why I run on the treadmill. This thing used to actually face the wall. Um, and I always figured that if I could run 
you know, 30 miles, which I've done now three times on that. I've done probably 10 marathons on it. I always figured if I could run with no music and no stimulation that it would make it that much easier when I went out into the woods and uh, was alone, which I am quite often um, in my own mind. So I don't train with any music. Occasionally I will, but I don't like having to rely on that to pass time. I just usually try to, to, to strengthen my brain to do that. Um, Frank says, nothing wrong with Bowser's HR lately. I haven't looked. I have to check it out. Um, I like to say, I'd like to think my heart rate's pretty low for normal, but I also run majority of the easy miles, so it's, I'm not pushing super hard, so it's not that impressive that my heart rate's low. <laughs> uh, Positive, he said, haha, thanks, Frank. Cooler morning temps are helping in a big way. Yeah, I've been trying to transition. So um, one of the things I'm trying to do is is get up and get into a routine of running in the morning, either on the treadmill or outside, because I want to start getting that out of the way. Um, a lot of what I've been dealing with here recently is the stress with life and work um, and family balance of all of this. And it got to a point where I was just getting so stressed because I was running out of time and I felt... Uh, pressure to uh, allow my wife the time she needs uh, with the kids because we're both here with the kids. The kids you know, obviously don't have school. Um, a lot of times I'm working home from work and then I'm having to go into work. I'm doing content for this channel. Um, and I'm trying not to be selfish with monopolizing uh, all of the extra time, like me being able to go do the things I want to do, but my wife not being able to. So it got to the point where I was just kind of paralyzed in not doing anything, um, just not being like, well, you know what, I'm just going to not do anything. And I have uh, the honeydew list I have here at home, like finishing stuff on my deck. There's just a lot of stuff that's been kind of just building up. Um, and I think I've been kind of hiding from it, uh, just working on content and running. Um, that stuff didn't go away by doing that. It just kind of pushed it down the road a little bit. So I'm in a much better place now. Um, so what I want to try to do is time block running which is something that's super important to me uh, and move that early in the morning uh, what I was typically doing is getting up early and working on YouTube stuff uh, you guys know I've talked about in the past that YouTube has a, an overhead to it that I have to spend time you know this is probably pretty close to a full-time job outside of my full-time job just with how much time I spend in editing planning shooting um, doing all the back-end stuff it's just it's very time-consuming uh, I just I got to get better at my time management time management uh, to make sure that uh, I'm successful in all things that I want to be successful in. Um, so that's kind of where I've been at. I wasn't in a great uh, mental place. There's a trying to remember. There's a guy named Triathlon. It's like Tristan or something like that. And uh, I wasn't even subscribed to him. I have to go look it up again. I watched this video today, and he posted a. It's a picture of. A guy who does triathlons and there's one with him like really fit and then one with him with weight on and he's just saying why he's not working out and gaining weight uh, and I listened to him talk about overtraining in the past and kind of getting into a place where he just was not and he said like just not in a rah-rah headspace and so that's kind of where I was like I am super excited I love running I love talking to you all about it. I love creating content and it gets to a point sometimes where, you know, I'm sick. I go through cyclical things too, where I'm stressed and I can't always be positive, uh, about everything. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but, uh, I, sometimes I just need to uh, deal with stress and, and move through it. Um, so that's kind of what I've been dealing with. Um, triathlon Taryn. I don't think that's who it is. I have to look it up. Um, it was actually in my, my feed today. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on a second, guys. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys deal with that very often, um, where the motivation just it's, it can be a cyclical thing, and I don't like to pretend. Um, one thing that you guys know about me is I like to be pretty transparent about things just because I don't like things ever be fake. And uh, so usually if I'm not making content, it's because I'm not in a great headspace. I'm dealing with stress and work and family, and I just don't feel like, getting in front of the camera and, and, and being all positive when I don't really feel that way. Uh, and I just got to get through the day. 
So that's typically what will happen, especially even with the live broadcast. Um, the same thing happens there. Sorry, I'm looking through these. It's been suggested to me. I gotta go in and find the history. History, here we go. Um, let me see. Here we go. Terran, Triathlon Terran. So you were right. So this is uh, the name. All right, of the video. Let me. That's probably what he said. Where is the chat now? There we go. Taryn, there it is. Yeah. Look, you pulled it. You were right on the. So that's the name of the video I watched today, and uh, I'd never seen a video, any videos of his, and it just spoke to me. Um, not that I've been in kind of an overtraining scenario, which I, I have been in the past. Um, I'm not. I don't think I was in that now. I've just. The, the stress that he was talking about is what really spoke to me. Um, that sometimes you're just, your highs aren't high and your lows aren't low. It's just like you don't feel like... It's like everything kind of just meshes into the same thing. And uh, I've just been kind of on this uh, quarantine loop, this daily loop. And uh, I worry about the mental health of my family and my wife and making sure everybody's happy you know, dealing with not being able to go on vacations and just kind of the implications of sports being canceled. I'm already getting told that fall sports for high school are getting canceled. We're having to deal with homeschooling, basically virtual um, schooling our children. So there's just a lot of stuff going on that that makes it tough to really um, get excited about stuff. So let me go through and catch up on some uh, comments here. Cycle on Wednesday said, so glad to hear it. I thought you thought of you when I got my negative COVID test last week. My results were back in 15 minutes. Frustrating that you had to wait so long. Yeah, personally, I've, I've had to for work. I have to take uh, them every couple weeks. So um, I got my negative COVID test. And I actually, there was part of me that thought mine was going to come back positive. Just how I felt. I didn't feel horrible, but it was, I felt off uh, two weeks ago. So... It was a good thing. It was good. Hey, Arlene, welcome to the stream. Probably missing somebody. Hey, Mickey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I've been kind of just blabbering on about kind of my head. So it's like stream of consciousness <laughs> chatting right now. So um, this is kind of my therapy, talking to all of you right now, talking to fellow runners and seeing if you guys are kind of dealing with the same stuff. Uh if Frank says, I still haven't gotten it back. I've been self-quarantining except for the runs. I feel fine. Yeah, I have uh, two people I know that tested positive. Um, I'm not in any interaction with them at work, but they did test positive, but they're both asymptomatic. Never felt a thing. One guy had it for almost two weeks after waiting for his results to come back positive. He was already like self-quarantined after that. Like it's just, it's weird. It's definitely weird. Recycle on Wednesday said, 55 degrees sounds amazing. Recycle on Wednesday says, Arlene M, hello. Um, Poser2 said, I've been exclusively focused on my MAF runs. Recycle on Wednesday said, glad you're feeling well to Frank. Um, thank you for taking precautions while you wait for the results. Absolutely. Arlene said, I'm considering Maffetone method for a while. It's low HR training i do not that i do that specifically but i do concentrate on kind of low hr uh training i've something i've done for a very very long time just i seem to respond well to it tasmania running said headlamp and night running that was my family workaround yeah that is a uh definitely an option i don't like going out at night um i have in the past I'd like, I, ideally, I would like to be able to get up at like 4, 4.30, put in an hour, hour and a half of running, just do a daily easy runs, get out there and just get time on my feet because I'm not training anything for specifically right now. Um, the Marine Corps Marathon, like you all know, I've been talking about this for weeks and months and months, um, hoping that it was going to happen. Now it says virtual, so I had to defer. You guys saw that. I posted a video on the channel where I talk about that and kind of walk through how you defer. Um, I deferred my entry. Sounds like something was storm outside. Um, 
So I deferred and I entered the virtual. So I think I'm going to do the, the virtual marathon or the virtual 50K. I think I want to lean towards the 50K just because if I'm going to do it, I want to do that one instead. Um, yeah, so I, I think I'm just going to probably just continue to, to tack on miles and make it easy, low heart rate running. Except for when I got on the trails, it's kind of hard to keep my heart rate down, especially yesterday. Positive said, uh, I've been hooked on early mer early morning runs now because of the comfortable temps. That's definitely the, the most, the only positive. I hate running in the morning. <laughs> Uh, recycling ones that I really can't do heat. I really like the heat. The heat doesn't bother me. The hot weather does not bother me at all when I'm running. I mean, I, most of my runs are in extreme heat, either in the midday or in that three to six range. Uh, so I'm used to it. Welcome to the stream, Sasha. Sasha said, I found it it's helpful to have a big run that is self-made. It is not is not at risk of canceling. Also, I have a plan where I see progress each week or so that makes me mentally feel better in this time. It's definitely good. You got to find ways to kind of motivate yourself, and that's definitely a good good uh, method. Recycle on Wednesday said, please do not apologize for sharing what you have been going through. It's so important that we keep talking and connecting with each other always, but especially when we're physically isolated. Um, yeah, and I left a comment on uh, that video today, the, the real, um, that I just mentioned, the triathlon Terran. It, it's even more difficult for people who create content, athletes who create content, because there's a pressure on us, whether it is uh, in our own heads or not. Um, there's a pressure that, f that makes us feel that we have to continue to create content and always be um, a face of motivation and excitement and like nothing ever gets us down and and I've tried not to do that on this channel because I don't like trying to fake things and I don't like trying to hide it because I don't think that helps anyone um, good or bad I mean some people might not like that they might come turn turn into a channel tune into a channel because they like that rah rah all the time um, I named this channel Motivation Theory based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we all have that needs pyramid. There's things that we need as humans to be happy. Um, and I've talked about that in the past on this channel when I did strictly this kind of motivational content. Um, but I've always tried to be honest about it because I don't, I want, it's really easy for me to, uh, to just not do content when I feel like I can't talk about my problems because, you know, um, or motivation or dealing with things because I want someone else to look at this and say, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no different. So it makes somebody else feel better to know that, uh, that they're going through and they're struggling with the same things as someone else. Um, I don't like the constant positivity on all some channels that I see that are running channels because it, it almost seems fake, um, or brand, uh, and then there's nothing wrong with that. It's what they do, and it's different than what I do. Um, I do like being positive. I am mostly a positive person. If you know me in real life, I am a very positive uh, individual. Um, I'm not pessimistic at all, but I do go through periods of um, highs and lows, definitely, for sure. And uh, do, dealing with all this with my family and trying to make sure they're okay, uh, dealing with schools and what we're going to be doing about schools and my work and dealing with uh, just everything that's going on in society right now, the pressures and that all of that's now causing, um, it's difficult. So running is, is my, is my healing. It's my, uh, stress reliever. Real brother 32. Good to see you, man. You take a break from streaming for a little bit. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at. And so I hope you all appreciate the uh, transparency that I have when it comes to that stuff. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stress out there. Absolutely, it's a lot of stress out there right now. And uh, I think, um, I think he mentioned it up there before by saying like, you know, we need to continue to talk about it because um, there are a lot of people that are more susceptible to the stresses and the uh, depression and uh, that stuff. They're more isolated. I'm lucky I'm not isolated. I still have a, a large family and people that I can talk to. And I do know a lot of people that are a lot more isolated. And so the, the mental aspect of all this is a lot harder 
on them because of the isolation. So, you know, as long as we look out for each other and, you know, and continue to talk about it and not try to fake like everything's okay, um, because that, I think that makes it worse for people that are struggling because they don't see that they don't see themselves and other people uh, and stuff like that. So, I'm not a psychologist, <laughs> just been a human for 44 years. Um, Recycle on Wednesday said, oh, okay, you already said that. Thank you. I appreciate that, by the way, Recycle on Wednesday. Uh, Mickey said, I enjoy doing the Spartan races and just got an email today that they're officially canceled for the rest of the year. Deflated my balloon. Yeah, I went through that when they, they uh, canceled the Marine Corps Marathon. I was really hoping that all the stuff that they were going to do with that, with the staggered start and, and, and you know, changing the cutoff times and limiting it to a, a faster race, um, that, that would, they would be able to kind of do it because I love that race. Um, looking forward to my eighth this year. Uh, when it was can the cancel, that just kind of was like another thing in that like three week, you know, pity bubble that I was in of not not running. It was just like another thing. It's like, ugh. So you know, yesterday I told asked the wife, I was like, I really need to go run. She said, go. So I went went out to the trails for a couple hours. It was definitely something I needed to do yesterday. So if you haven't seen the video, I posted it today. It's a good video. It's 15 minutes long, but it's you know beautiful trails and it's me just kind of talking. And I cut out probably 15 minutes of it just to not make it a ridiculously long thing. Uh, I was I was very happy. So I was chatty, definitely chatty. This is sorry to hear about your race, Mickey. I know everyone's kind of dealing with that. Arlene said, I signed up for the MCM 50 virtual. They should call it the Marine Corps 50K, take out the marathon. Yeah, I didn't see the part. I mean, I signed up for the marathon, but it didn't. I didn't see anything delineated between the 50K and the marathon. So I was, I, th I thought I read some point where you could just do either and send your results and it just you get results. You just go into whatever you did. Uh, Real Brother 32 said, yes, a real pressure. Tasmanian Running said, struggle is real, absolutely. Um, it's a lot of stress, absolutely. Um, David Rowan, sadly, time to go, working in the morning. Hey, well, it's good seeing you, David. Sorry I didn't, I didn't catch that before you took off. Um, be safe. Real Brother 32 said, I'm addicted to streaming. I think that isolation leads to depression. It does. It does. I have some people that I know and worked with who have, um, through the you know, being all of us being kind of sent home to telework and all of this stuff, they were isolated, um, recently divorced and isolated. And just there's some people that are struggling. Um, you know, I'm not in any way, shape, or form trying to feel, you know, have a pity party because I, 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 it's not that for me. Um, I'm more susceptible to that kind of stuff, but um, I know there's some people that are in, in tough situations out there. So I just, you know, if you know someone who's isolated, um, just reach out to them, see how they're doing. I mean, I'm not a touchy feely <laughs> person like that, but I care about humans a lot. And, uh, I definitely think we should be looking out for each other. Arlene M said yesterday was my one year broken foot anniversary. <laughs> uh, got an anniversary of your broken foot. That's terrible. You don't want to break your foot. Um, hope you never have another one though. I fractured my foot last year on July 27th during the minor lady eight hour. So happy to be healed. Yeah, definitely. I've never broken my foot. I've broken an ankle and tore my calf muscle and that was horrible. Um, I've hurt my foot. I, you guys remember towards, I don't know, two, three months ago, I felt like I maybe had fractured my foot cause I was dealing with, I couldn't push off. You know, I ran a 50 K with a foot that I thought was broken. I don't know if it was or not. I never went and got it x-ray because I didn't want to go to the doctor. Um, <laughs> but definitely, uh, I don't wish a broken foot on anybody, especially if you're a runner. That's terrible. Um, Real Brother 32 said, said, that's an amazing mission. Check on your loved ones. Absolutely. And friends. You know, I, you know, we all get into this kind of loop, man. It's When I looked up and I saw the stream had been for two weeks, like I was like, it's really been two weeks. I just didn't even... It didn't even dawn on me it had been that long and everything is is just going by you know we're already in july and it, it just it feels like it was just march so you know and i think about that i think some of the elderly people that are i love that are in my fa my, my mind and that i talk to every so often like a month will go by and i haven't called them I'm like why like it just everything is flying by and this ridiculous loop we're all in right now is, is getting old but we just have to take a, a asserted effort to uh, kind of check on people, make sure they're okay. 
Tasmania running said, Woo, I'm in a moon boot right now. Ruptured a couple of tendons. Holy smokes, what were you doing? Good grief. Ruptured tendons. I have a moon boot up in my attic right now from when I broke my ankle. I never want to be in that thing again. Posner2 said, Having to telecommute since this stuff happened has definitely allowed me to be able to have time to run more. Has helped me bump up the weekly, mile, weekly mileage. Hope I can keep it up. Yeah, so... The Mudcat said, Josh Grant. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Is that someone we should look up? Um, t yeah, so... In a lot of ways, this uh, has been kind of a blessing. Like, I, there, I've got to spend a lot more time with my family that I've never gotten, I've never had been able to spend with them ever. Like the baby, you know, I have a almost one year old now. I've never in the history of my entire family been able to spend this much time with the babies as we've had them, my wife and had them. Um, so there's definitely a huge aspect of this that I'm extremely grateful for. Again, this isn't a pity party. Um, we had some storms rolling as so I keep hearing them out of the, the back of my, my head here. Um, yeah, so there's definitely a positive. So, you know, that's the uh, the way that I am. I try to, to find the positives in it. And there's been a lot more positives in this for me personally in what we're doing. Not, so, not in society by any means or the world, but for me personally, the time that I've been able to spend with my family and work and spend time on the things that I enjoy doing has been a huge benefit. So Tasmanian Runnings. Oh, what's in the glass? This is a uh, Devil's Backbone, the Mud Cat. It's a uh, Devil's Backbone uh, Vena Lager. Um, Tasmania Running said, "Rolled my ankle badly a month ago. Finally got MRI and found the tendons were separate. Holy smokes! Working on the upper. Yeah, that's that's almost worse than breaking it. Uh, I pulled when I rolled my ankle. I was running. Quick story." It was at nighttime and I was coming around a turn and so a car was coming around this kind of S-curve so I cut across the road to get on the other side of the road, uh, the wrong side of the road to run on just to get away from this, this car because uh, the headlights were blinding me. And when I cut across the road, I hit the other side and I couldn't see. I had to look down and I stepped on the edge of the road and my ankle rolled off the asphalt. My ankle literally was like 90 degrees and I just ate it, running full speed. And uh, it ruptured, it sheared that, you know the little bone on the side of your ankle, it sheared the front face of it, it tore the tendons going up the back. My, my calf muscle um, completely tore one of the t three tendons that run over top of that bone. It was awful. And they were saying sometimes when you, most of the time when you hurt, you sprain your ankle, it's actually worse than a break. So it was painful. It was super painful. So I hope you heal up quickly. That's awful. Um, Recy Recycling Wednesday said, running eek, or eek, I hope recovery goes well absolutely so um, now with all of these races happening um, there's part of me that started to get a little more pessimistic with with all the races getting canceled I was really 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 holding on to hope that the Marine Corps Marathon was going to happen um, and then I thought if that would go along the JFK 50 would go along and I've been holding off on signing up for that because it's so expensive and I got to get a hotel room and I didn't want to go through all that until I know for sure that it's going to happen. Um, but with all of this happening, is it changing how you guys are training? Like typically right now, marathoners, people doing marathons and stuff like that. Who's out of here? Who's out of here? I want to say... Bus time. Oh, Tasmania running. Good seeing you. Be safe. Be safe. Um, like typically right now, everybody would be training for the marathons in the fall and the races in the fall. But since none of those are happening, are you all changing your, your training? Like, are you going into maintenance mode? Like there's part of me that wants to go into a training program, but this thinks I just want to go into maintenance mode and just try stuff like try to go through, try to raise my mileage up to just hit 70 miles in a week just to do it. You know, just to, to try to do it. I haven't done it in a very long time, so I thought I just would try to do it. Like, I'm just trying to find little goals here and there that if I do them, will just get me 
keep me in shape for you know for whatever goal I could come across up there. But I don't really even feel like training for anything specific. Like even the Marine Corps Marathon, I've kind of lost motivation to try to train specifically for it now because um, I'm going to be running a course that's going to be nothing like the Marine Corps Marathon course. I have no area near me that is as flat as a Marine Corps Marathon. Um, it, it, it would it would be brut- a brutal marathon for me to run near uh, my current location. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to continue to try to find things to do. Um, I, I've worked on maybe trying to get my mile down, my mile uh, PB down. You see how if I can you know get down to 6:30 or something like that in a mile. Try to lower my maybe try to break 50 or 20 minutes in the 5K. I think my my bet personal best in the 5K is like 22 minutes, um, and I did that like I don't know eight years ago, something like that. So you know just doing things like that just to have fun. Um, I'm more about trying to just have fun at this point instead of trying to stress myself out training for any specific race because I feel like uh, while I love the virtual races and they're fun, it's kind of hard to get motivated to, to do specific training for them to try to get your personal best. Does that make sense? Like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Tasmania running had to run at bus time. You'll catch the bus. Um, Arlene said the Patapsco, I can't even say that, 50K and the JFK 50 miler haven't canceled yet. Yes, and so I'm holding off. As soon as I see that the JFK is going to happen or they have they have relatively high confidence it's going to happen, I'm going to try to like sneak in there and register to see what happens. Uh, I think a lot of people might be trying to do that. So... I don't know, but I think I'm going to have fun just running. I think I just, I don't, like yesterday, I had no specific goal yesterday other than just to kind of take it easy and enjoy the woods, and that's what I did. I went out and I filmed. I enjoyed the water, the streams, um, talked to you all and uh, on camera, and it was fun. I enjoyed yesterday, and it was a good hard workout, and that's, you know, if I could do that every day, I would do that. If that's all I could ever do for the rest of my career and running, and this channel, I would do that in a second because it was fun. So I hope you, if you guys haven't seen that video, you should check it out after the stream. Um, let me know what you think. Oh, and if everybody that's in here right now, make sure you hit that thumbs up button on the stream. I appreciate it. Um, a couple other things. If you missed them, um, I did the Acorn Bar. Did you guys see that? So the Acorn Bar Company, the Thousand Oaks uh Thousand Oaks Acorn Company had sent me a box of their acorn bars uh, after seeing the runner box review that I did. Those things were so good. I did get confirmation that they're making other flavors. They're going to be coming out with like three or four other flavors, and they're coming out with a vegan version, a vegan option. Uh, so I think is it you, Arlene, that says they didn't have it vegan, but they, they confirmed to me in an email. Let me actually check it out. Hold on one second. Let me pull up the email from them. Uh, so the acorn bar is now they're, they're working on a coffee chocolate cinnamon flavor I don't think it's I, I don't know if it's like a coffee version a chocolate version and a cinnamon flavored one and then they're also doing a vegan version of the original flavor. Um, so they're gonna do a vegan version of the uh, one that I did a review on, which would be awesome. They said it's gonna be scheduled for the fall. So for those of you who are vegan, that's good. Uh, for those of you who just want different options, uh, which I'm looking forward to. So they're gonna be sending me more of those when they come out in the fall, and I'm looking forward to trying those. And I will, again, always review them and let you know what I think. But again, that's probably my favorite bar, super, it's not probably. It's my favorite bar. Super good. I wish I could send you all some of those. My mom even ordered. <laughs> my mom sends me a text today telling me she ordered some based on my review. Which is part of me makes me feel like I need to buy my mom some and send it to her. Um, Positive 2 said, I'm trying to slowly build my mileage base building for next year using all the Mafetone training. No speed work until spring. 
working on that low end aerobic all for first 50K in 2021 as my 2020 50K canceled. So that's probably around what I'm going to be doing, except I probably will do a little bit of speed work just for fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm in the middle of trying to build my base up also. I think my highest mileage this year is I think I've got I've hit 50 miles two, three times, 50, 51 miles, something like that several times. Um, I want to get my mileage uh, up too. Um, so we, I want to be right there with you. That's a good plan. Kelly's in the house. You're late, Kelly. We already had all the fun. It's all over with now. You just get to listen to me be boring. Uh, Kelly said, hi, all was clearing trails, uh, because I'm sick of the roads. <laughs> nice. That's right. I'm sick of the roads too. Absolutely. I needed that trail session. And that's part of, you know, all the excuses I, I've given to you guys already of why I, uh, have kind of taken a break. I, I kind of got burnt out on the treadmill. I haven't been on the treadmill and I don't even know how long and you guys know me. I I'm the, I'm a defender of the treadmill. Um, I love running on it in the past. It's a necessary evil and doesn't really bother me that much, but I, I have dreaded, like I've just not run instead of doing it. And then I started dreading even going on the roads because I've been running so much on the roads. I needed the trails. It has been, it had probably been well over a month since I've ran on the trails. Well over a month. No one should ever go that long. It's like everyone's thinking about the the math tone. You know why it's so appealing to me? It's a lot of easy running, <laughs> which is already my my mentality to begin with. I Arlene said Acorn needs to get rid of the the eggs and honey and make it. They're making a meat vegan. Kelly, don't don't come in and, and try to feed people your 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 picky bars. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yes, Arlene, they're making a vegan version. So, is honey is honey not vegan? Why is honey not vegan? I, I don't know a lot about the vegan um, restrictions. And eggs are good too. I don't know why you don't want to eat eggs. They're delicious. And so is steak and chicken. <laughs> The bar seems pretty healthy to me, but <laughs> picky bar is better than acorn. Price me wrong. You, you prove you're wrong or price me wrong. Price could be it too. They're a little more expensive. <laughs> honey is bee spit. Arlene, honey is like one of the oldest things people eat. Been eating it for thousands of years. It's super good. It's a good natural sweetener. It's better than eating all this artificial nonsense out there. Bees create it naturally. I don't get that. I argue that one point. I have to try the picky bars too. Um, but it's good. I, the acorn bar has set a high standard for me. It's the, the really high bar for me of what I think is good now. I love Cliff Bars too. So, you know, uh, I did want to mention Cliff Bar when I did the Acorn Bar review, but I love Cliff Bars too. Uh, their white chocolate macadamia nut bar is to die for. I love it, but it's still not as soft. If you get one super fresh, it's on the softer side, but it still doesn't taste as good as the Acorn Bar. That makes me laugh, Arlene, though. Honey is bee spit. It's delicious, though. Recycle on Wednesday said, I would, I, I never would have taken up running if I wasn't living near a trail at the time. Trails are the best. They are absolutely the best. I'm going to start trying to film a lot more on the trails. It seems like you got everyone responds more to my trail content. Like I've created three videos that absolutely just nose dive. And I was down about that too. Like I was a super sad sack for three weeks. You know, my last three videos just went, nobody cared made me sad until I run I don't like go on the trails and then now that one's doing really well Arlene M said honey is considered plant-based but not vegan did you ever see the Simpson episode where 
Lisa was a vegan and she was getting into that whole uh, culture and she met somebody who called himself a, a, a it was like a, a what was it seventh level vegan that he didn't eat anything that cast a shadow I thought that was funny recycle when he said I love cliff bars they are delicious I, I've loved them for a very long time the white chocolate macadamia one is my favorite it's my son's favorite too um, that's the only one I ever really buy now because I, I just love it. I'm one of those people when I find something I like, I just stick with it. I don't, I don't try to like, I'll try something else, but I, I won't just buy like a whole bunch of different stuff. I like, I find something I like and I just buy a lot of that. I used to be the same way with shoes. Kelly said, um, the honey was the only one thing I didn't quite accept when my parents were vegan. Everything else makes sense. Yeah, I can, I can hear an argument. Not that I agree with it. There's, there's parts of me that likes uh, fruitarianism, like I don't like an extreme into any one area. I think all food has a benefit. It's when you, I think, people can overdo it one way or the other. Um, but I don't hold, you know, what somebody else's dietary uh, wants and needs are against them. I don't, it, you know, everybody is their own person. They can do what they want. Mickey said, "I haven't had a picky bar yet. I'm going to give them a try. I'm going to give them a try too." And if I don't like them, I'm going to call Kelly out in the video. <laughs> Wayne said, not that I'm a vegan, but it's because of the labor of bees like milking cows. D9 in the house is dropping a $4.99 super chat. Got to get back. To I didn't even see you were in here, man. You should have said hello. Well, thank you for uh, swinging through. This is another. You and uh, Real Brother Thirty Two are, are streaming beasts. You got to get back to your stream, but wanted to say hi. I'm, it's good to see you. I know you're getting your walking in. Uh, hope you start getting your like five, ten, eight, nine, ten hour walks in. I can't even count anymore. Um, thank you for the super chat, D Nine. I need to swing by and, and check out your stuff too. Um, I haven't been in your stream for probably a week or two. Sometimes I sneak in and just sit there watch you play the old school games. Thank you again for the super chat, D9. Much appreciated. Goes into the coffers for shoe shoe purpose, pur purchases. Wow, I haven't even had a full beer yet. Kelly said, "Pause or two. It's a good. It's good to hear the success stories. My heart rate is so high. I need to do something." That's right. What was I going to talk about? Oh, we got a new subscriber. Shadow Runner Production, new subscriber. I just hit my name on table. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. I need to go back up here for a second. I skipped down. Uh, so Wayne, Wayne said it was about the labor of the bees, but isn't. So, but the lab, but bees make the honey no matter what. So bees make honey. That's what they do. It's not like anybody's forcing them to. I think they provide homes. So I'm not sure what that... I, mean, I can see that. I can see why someone would be against eating meat. While I'm not that person, um, I can see why people would not be for mass-produced meat. I get that. Um, I don't get the honey one so much. But I do believe in the protection of bees, though. Like, I yell at anyone I see swinging at a bee. Like my kids, anybody, I get mad about that. So protect the bees. They're like super, super important to our way of life, just living in general. So I'm not trying to be callous when I said I don't get the honey thing, but I meant the honey's good. <laughs> uh, Mickey said, enjoy the trail running. Absolutely, good. We definitely see eye to eye on that one. Uh, Positive 2 said, Kelly, love it allows me to increase my mileage and not beat up my body. HR limit is like a rev limiter to keep me from running too fast. I believe I've shaved 50 or 45 to 60 seconds per mile off my time. That's exactly why I do it, Ponser. That's why I've talked about um, my easy days and why I run, you know, mostly easy runs. Um, occasionally, just because I want to, I'll speed it up. But absolutely, 100%, I'm on board with low heart rate training. That's how I increase my mileage back when I was running, trying to run really fast, running half marathons and marathons, like really trying to increase my speed, I was getting beat up 
severely on the roads because I was constantly running so many hard miles. Um, even that guy that I was talking to you about, the triathlon guy, he talks about overtraining that he did, and he says it's extremely detrimental to your fitness that you have to have rest days, you have to have easy days, and your easy days have to be easy. That is not weak-minded. It is, you know, it is not cool to just constantly push, push, push hard, hard, hard. I, I have friends who were runners that when we were younger, and they're talking to me now as adults, like getting into running, and I just I hear them telling me stories about them just running hard, running hard. I'm trying to explain to them why you need to have your easy days. It's like they don't believe me, and I'm like. No, and they won't even come run with me because they hear the distances that I run, and they're like, "I don't, I can't come run with you." I'm like, "I'm, I'm running slow. Like you can come out and run eight miles at thirteen miles, you know, thirteen minutes per mile on the trails, like because we're climbing, we're hiking. Like it's, this is a good time. Anybody can do that. It's not that hard." Kelly said, "If you go to the website, they've got a discount. So I'm gonna have to go check out the picky bars. You sold me. I'll try them." Ponzo two said, "Kelly, or increased mileage is increased mileage is responsible. Probably combo of both." Larry Lawrence said, "MAF here, 80 mile weekly shooting for 3,000 this year, but I'm just an old man. Slow. Holy smokes, Larry! 80 miles a week is phenomenal. I don't care if you're running it slow, fast. This it impresses me that anybody can run that far weekly." Because uh, it's time consuming. And to me, it's, it's just it's a lot that goes into doing that. Even a, devoting that much time into running is just amazing. So 3,000 miles this year. I hope you hit it, Larry. You get to keep me informed on that because that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Mickey said, thank you to Kelly. Show, Shadow Runner Production subscribed. Uh, Recycle on Wednesday said, I'm the same way, but the white chocolate ones in bulk. Absolutely. Kelly said, it's good to hear success stories. My heart rate is high, so I need something to do something. Yeah, Kelly, get on it. Get on the boat. The slow heart rate boat. Ponzer 2 said, I'm an RX bar fan. Need to stop eating them, though, as they have too much sugar in it. More my liking. I don't even know when the last time I've had an RX bar. Again, once I try something I like, I stick with it. <laughs> Kelly said, I'll trade you your leftover picky bars for your headband if you don't like them. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll be on the way. If they're gross, definitely I'll send them to you. D9 super chatted 499. Again, thank you, D9. You rock. Um D9's a good guy. He's uh he's been one of my friends on YouTube for years now. We both started way back a long time ago and, um, he vlogged, he did kind of this retro style stuff. He, his videos looked old school, like they were shot in like the eighties. Uh, now he does a lot of streaming of old retro games and stuff like that, making beats. Um, so he's, he's got a cool channel. He's definitely a nice guy. Joe Curran said, sorry, I'm late. Just got off the trails. Hello, John. Well, again, the only excuse for being late or having to leave early is because of trails. And so as long as that's the excuse, everyone's good to go. So welcome, Joe. It's good to see you. Hope you enjoyed the, the trails. And just like with running on trails, you always have to enjoy running on the trails. If you don't, something's wrong. You're doing it wrong if you don't enjoy it. <laughs> Kelly said, holy crap to Larry. 80 mile weeks. Do you still have to walk to get your heart rate down? He said, Larry said, not anymore, 128. Uh, there's, there, I, can, I can run with my heart rate in the 120s. I feel like I can run forever because I've been doing that for so long. Like if I can keep it around there, it'll slow down. I mean, I'll probably be running, I don't know, 13 minute miles, 12 minute miles, but I feel like I can run forever then. But I do have that cardiac drift that, that happens over, after a certain amount of time. Joe Kern said, enjoyed this morning's video. Everybody check it out. That's right. Listen to Joe. So first off, click like on this video. And then after this video is over with, go watch this morning's video. I hope you guys will like it. It's fun. I would love to bring everybody out to the out those trails and run with everybody. Do like a huge group run. Do a race out there or something. That would be awesome. Motivation Theory Run Club race.
Oh, come on, guys. You guys are too nice. Ponser2. 499. Super chat. Thank you so much. Ponser2 said, I got to get back to work. Come on. You can play hooky, right? Till next time, have a great day. Hope everyone has a good running week and hits their goals. Absolutely. Good luck to you, Ponser. You, you are on. You're motivating me now. You're coming in here and you're throwing all the comments in and you're on top of your game right now. Good for you. Um, you know, I'm on your side rooting for you. Um, I can't wait to see where we all are a year from now with all of our goals and stuff like that. So thank you very much. Goku Runner missed it. What'd you miss? You didn't miss it. I'm still here. We're still talking. I just watched your video, uh, Goku Runner, literally before I came live. I was almost late coming down here because I was watching your video. Um... Again, thank you, Pazza, too, for the super chat. You rock. Much appreciated. Kelly asks, Larry, how long did it take? I love hilly trails. And while I don't mind walking, I'm afraid I'd only walk. Larry said four to five months. A few two to a day. 330 a month. There's 330 miles a month. Wow, that's awesome. Arlene M. said, the picky oatmeals are really good, especially the apple Mm, I would love apple oatmeal. I love like apple cinnamon. Super good. The beet oatmeal is good on a running date. My wife might like the beet. I'm not a beet guy. It tastes like dirt. My wife loves beets though. And not the beets you dance to. The gross beets. <laughs> that grow in the dirt. Uh, I'm making everybody mad today. They'll be mad with me, Arlene. They'll be mad. Kelly said uh, the oatmeal of theirs I don't care for was the the matcha What's the, what I missed something um you didn't miss it Goku runner we're still here man <laughs> Larry Kelly said Larry and Ponser you two convinced me hey, after September race yes yeah you definitely need to do start doing a low heart rate Kelly I tell all my friends who go out and they constantly tell me like, hey, I ran a new P PB today. I ran a new PB. I'm like, you shouldn't be going for your personal best every time you go out and run. Like, what are you doing? It's it's so hard to break them of that. Goku Runner said, what up, everybody? And John, what is up, Goku Runner? Goku Runner just had his uh, virtual 5K. Is Goku Runner 5K? I missed it. I'll get the next one. I'll get the next one. Goku Runner said, beets taste like baby corn. Beets to me taste like dirt. My wife likes the pickled beets. Like, and she's like, she'll just down a jar. I just can't get on board with it. I don't know what it is. I just can't get on board with it. I mean, I'll deal with it. I mean, I'm a grown up. If I got to eat it, I'll eat it. But <laughs> Joe Kern said, 73 days till my first 100 attempt. I'm super excited for you, Joe. I'm super pumped for you. Time to up the mileage a bit. Yeah. If you're going to do 100, you definitely be, need to be getting a time on your feet. Make sure that you're uh, standing as much as you can. Even if you're not getting as much mileage and you can't get there, you need to spend as much time a day on your feet because that's going to be difficult on your feet. Frank said beats are good for more efficient cardio system. Dang it, Frank always bringing in the facts. Can't I just hate, hate beats, Frank, without you making me feel bad about the science about it? <laughs> Frank, first I said my my heart rate, and Frank said, "Yeah, it's not your heart rate. Your what your watch is no good." <laughs> my wife will like that. The beats are good for the the cardio. Yeah, I think all things that taste bad are good for you in some way. It's it's to find out who really really wants it. Because if everything that was that tastes good was healthy, everybody'd be super healthy. And you know why would anybody want to do that? Goku runners said PBs are overrated. They are overrated. I don't pay attention to PBs. Like, that's not something I care about too much. And I feel like something's wrong with me because I don't. Like, I care to an extent, but just not, not enough to really go for them that much. Especially since most of my PBs were prior when I was running at a different point for different reasons like when i was running my 5ks 10ks and half marathons i was only specifically training for those so to try to do one now when i don't run those races anymore really is just kind of weird 
Even though I'd like to, but I'm just trying to do stuff to have fun now. Running is fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it fun. And stay fun. And keep healthy. And not get hurt. Because getting hurt sucks. Kelly said, I love those pickled beets and definitely they're definitely good for you. My wife loves them. She loves them. We probably got jars of them upstairs. She loves all that stuff. She loves pickled beet salads and stuff. It's just craziness. Wayne said, what's the, the one tip you would give someone who's been struggling with injury, fitness, weight gain, and getting back into the game mentally? Well, Wayne, you have come to the right place because I was that person. Um, I've been running since I was 30, so I'm 44 for 14 years now. Um, I took off for a couple years for all of those reasons. Um, I started in January my comeback. I've had this running channel for a long time, but January of this year, I started my comeback, and there's a playlist on my... If you go to my channel, uh, if you click on playlists, and then you go down, you'll find um, my couch, my ultra marathon training couch to ultra marathon. And I talk about my mental state and all of that stuff. So you can go back and catalog the last 28 weeks of me losing almost 40 pounds, getting back into it. I talk about my mental state through that, how I get through it. Um, the biggest tip I can give someone is consistency. Um, and the reason I say that is the only way you're going to get out of say battling back against weight gain. I mean, it's, it's difficult when you're injury, but if you're coming back from injury, is this consistency. You gotta show up, you gotta show up and put the work in. There's gonna be days you don't want to, but every single day you should be doing something that forwards you toward, towards your goal. Even if it's small. Um, I found that making sure that I got a workout in, whether it, whether it was a uh, cross training workout or a run, even if it's a one mile run or a 15 minute run or a 20 minute run, just getting the workout in will help. I talk a lot about weight loss and the kind of the science behind it and how you have to be consistent to do it. And what most people do is they work out a little bit and it's tough and they don't see progress immediately. So therefore they stop doing it because they don't think it's actually helping when they don't realize is that it takes a while to start tipping those scales in your favor to start losing that weight and to start seeing the progress. And then there will be times when you start seeing the progress and your weight starts to drop and then you level off. Your metabolism, everything kind of, you hit that equilibrium. And if you need to continue to lose weight, you need to shock your body into doing other things. You know, adding in a lot of hill workouts or sprints or doing a lot more lifting. There's got to, you got to constantly be a student of what works for you. We're all an experiment of one. Uh, we have to do what works for us. But one thing I do know, because I've, I've been in your, your spot, Wayne, several times um, consistency is the one tip you have to show up you have to show up for yourself nobody can do it for you you can't will yourself to lose weight you can't will yourself to get better you have to put in the work and it sounds overly simplistic but that's the only thing i can kind of think of right off the top of my head if you go watch that series that 28 week series that's still going for me by the way um, I talk about all this stuff, and you can see my weight loss and the progress through, and I talk a lot about that. I mean, most people in here have probably seen a lot of that, so um, they can they can hip you to, uh, to my mental state through all that and talking through all of that. Yeah, Kelly says right there. Joe Kern said, by the way, I would drive to Virginia for Motivation Theory Ultra. Yeah, hint, hint. That's right. Absolutely. And, and by the way, Wayne, you can do it. You really can. I've done it many many times I've come back um, it's even harder now to come back than the first time I did because I know the work that's got to go in but I do know the I do know the equation and consistency is the number one part of that equation it's the most important part of it Kelly said John is your man for that Wayne absolutely absolutely Goku Runner said, I do the beet powder too in smoothies. Yeah, I would do the beet powder. I mean, I do, do know that there is a benefit to beets. Absolutely. They're good for you. I just can't get over the dirt taste. Which probably means I need it more. I've always heard of things that taste badly to you or the things you need the most. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Kelly said, oh, Motivation Theory Ultra. That's right. Going to have to make it happen. Goku Runner said, I'm game for an MTRC Ultra. We can send vids to John or races. He can make a cool edit of it. That's right. I've actually thought about that. You brought it up, but I actually have thought about doing that. And uh, 
because I'm not so big that I think I'm going to get hundreds and hundreds of videos. It would make it doable, but you know, um, I think it would be cool to kind of do that and everybody can kind of send in some clips and I can edit it all together. That'd be awesome. Mickey said MTRC Ultra. That's right. Arlene M said, I don't care about PBs now. I just hate worrying about getting time cutoffs at races. Yeah, me too. Me too. Joe Kern said, small goals, Wayne. Yeah, that's another part of it. It's just you know, consistency and small goals are super important. Celebrate your wins. Um, celebrate the wins. You know, getting up one day and getting the workout in, someday that's the win. I mean, just getting that one week down, loss of one pound, um, making sure that you're still, because you're getting hungry, uh, your your hunger is going to spike, and you got to control that hunger by making sure you're choosing good foods, and, and the weight loss will happen. You'll see me. You'll see how fat my face is when you see me back in January. You just have to be consistent, and eventually you can get to a point where you can eat what you want. But at the beginning, it's super important to really concentrate on taking in the good food, eat clean, and be consistent, and and, and celebrate your small goals. Set small goals and celebrate your wins. You really do. It just helps keep that motivation going. Wayne said, thanks, great advice. We'll check out the series. Yeah, definitely go check out that series. Um, I, I built that series specifically for things like what you just asked for, Wayne. People like you right now. And I'm still still continue to put content in it. So I'm going to at least be doing that for the next year. <laughs> said, when are you going to get the quarantine haircut? Uh, oh, man, look at this. It's It's getting out of control. I don't know. It's weird for me because there's part of me that hates it part of me that likes it because I have an excuse to grow my hair out again. I haven't done it for so long. Back in college, I had, after I came back from New York and I wasn't modeling and acting anymore, I grew my hair out. I loved having long, having, having long hair, had earrings. I, you know, I have tattoos and stuff and, um, I really did enjoy doing that. So right now, part of me enjoys growing my hair out and part of me thinks it's ridiculous. So I don't know. There's part of me that's wanted to cut it on live with you guys. Just, jack it up cut it and then go get it fixed later on so maybe i'll maybe i'll do that you know maybe one one of these live streams i'll cut it live on uh on air in front of you guys and then i'll get it fixed <laughs> yeah my boss the other day is like asked me when i'm gonna get a haircut goku runner said it would make for great content i think it would i think it would um, Kelly said, I'm doing the Galloway right now. I like it, but it doesn't involve heart rate. I'm thinking I just add that component in myself. Easy runs. That's right. That's all I did. You know, I, I, I butcher workouts, training plans. I, I, I hack them all up and use them how I want to use them. I like, I take the bones and make, and, and kind of put everything else on I want to put in. Kelly said, Goku run a brilliant idea. Your 5k challenge was great. Yeah, that was cool. I'm glad you did that. It's awesome. Paving the way for the, the, the Motivation Theory Run Club Ultra. Cycle on Wednesday said about injury. It's very helpful for me to think of rest days as part of my running program instead of deviation from it keeps the momentum. That's an important part. Uh, rest days need to be looked at as a positive thing that they are part of a uh, work they are part of your plan so when you're injured just understand you got to heal your body first and it's, it's it's a necessity so the mental aspect of that to me is fine i've i've come to grips with uh days off that doesn't bother me anymore like it used to the only time that i start to really worry about there's a there's been a couple times where i've run 14 15 18 days in a row and then like part of me that's the ocd part that starts to fall in love with the numbers aspect like oh you know i should keep this going like that's unhealthy i do only do it there's no health reason other than me just wanting to say oh i've run 20 days in a row that's really cool nobody else cares except me uh, but rest days are super important joe kern let your kids cut it then fix it after <laughs> I used to do that with my daughter. Uh, that's right. If I'm cutting my hair, I'm going to do it live on, on in front of you guys. If I do that, um, I've let my kids cut my beard. So when I first started this channel back in 2015, I made a promise to my kids. I would not shave my beard until I hit a hundred subscribers. Um, and I think it took like four or five, months. I don't remember how long it took, but I grew my beard out 
and then my kids shave it off in my kitchen. And the video is on this channel somewhere. I've hidden all those playlists, but the videos are still there. If you go reverse sort my stuff, you can go and see all my old videos, the family um, vlog stuff. But I do shave the beard. I, don't, I haven't let them cut my hair, though. But that sounds like fun. Maybe I'll do that. That would be fun. Arlene M., put it on Strava and you'll get 80,000 people signed up. Too many. Ask Claire, wow, Ginger. She spent days mailing out emails. <laughs> yeah, that's the difficult part. If you actually do like a large race, like if you promise medals and stuff, like how would that work? Like if Goku Run, I need to actually talk to you. There's a couple things I'd like to talk to you about. Um, I posted you something about content uh, on, a, on a comment at one point, but like for the race, like that's a lot of work. But races are not easy, especially when you could easily have a race swell to be larger than an in-person race. Like how you do the medals. You let a company do that? Mail out the medals and stuff like that if that's what people want to do? I'm assuming so. Because I can't imagine you'd order medals and then send them out individually because that would just be way too much work. Joe Curran said, that must have been so much fun. Goku Runner said, mine was free. I just had two prizes, no medals. Absolutely. I think it'd be cool if you could have a, a race company where they do the sign up, they pay them and they mail the medals out, but you do the race part of it. I don't know about sending out that many thank you emails. If, you, if there's a company that provides that service that could do it for you and you just kind of pay them, like I wouldn't mind paying, you know, a hundred bucks to a company or whatever it would be to, to manage that. I don't know. And they take some off the top or how it was managed. I don't know. Joe Curran said, yeah, she's 16 now, so times are different. Ah, uh, the good old days. <laughs> it goes by quick. It goes by so quick. Yeah, so that, that will probably be the next thing I'll try to plan. I'll try to plan some sort of virtual thing. Um, that would be cool. All right, well, I think it's been, we've gone over an hour now. You know, I try to keep you guys to this hour. It's been a while though, so thank you to D9 and thank you to Posner2 for the super chats. You guys are awesome. I, I really appreciate the support for the channel. Uh, everyone else, I, I appreciate the support and just viewing my content and hanging out with me here. This has been this has been a great conversation. I really needed this. It's been a long two week, long three weeks for me, but it's been two weeks since we've done the uh, the live chat, and I'm still going to continue to do this every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, so you know, everyone I can see right now, I'm going to go through this list. Well, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can do this. Restore chat. Participants. So we got Arlene, Goku Runner, Joe, Kelly, Recycle on Wednesdays, and everybody else. Goku Runner. I already said your name, but they only list like six participants right now. Thanks, thanks to everybody for viewing. Um, I appreciate it. I hope everybody has a good week. I'm back this week running, so I'm hoping I can get I can keep this motivation running. I can, this momentum I've got for this week, and, and kind of get back into the to the thing again. Did somebody send another super chat in here? Go run a beer. <laughs> Cheers, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, Goku Runner, for the five bucks. Uh, the super chat. That's awesome. Thank you for the beer. And just because you did that, I'm gonna go have another one because you bought it for me. It's expensive beer. I appreciate that. Have a good week, everybody. Goku Runner, I actually probably need to uh, exchange texts with you. Um, I'd like to talk to you at some point about some other stuff. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Kelly, Mickey, Goku Runner, Arlene, Joe, Frank, I know you're out there somewhere. We're cycling on Wednesday. Everyone, thank you so much. Wayne, um, you guys rock. I really appreciate uh, all of you. Go check out my latest, all my content that I've had. Over the last couple of weeks, go watch it, especially the one I released today. It's a good one. Uh, thank you all. Be safe. And I will see you next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Be safe, everyone. You guys rock. I'm going to sit here in the chat for a minute. Make sure I didn't miss anything.
Jacqueline Wednesday said, thanks, John. This was really fun. Hope things get less stressful. Me too. Cheers, everybody. I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm a lot happier right now. Let me switch this back on. Let me tell everybody. Let me speak. I know they signed off, but I just want to let you all know, this this has actually uh, made me extremely happy. Uh, I'm feeling good again. I feel like myself again. So um, this week has been really good. My run yesterday is really good. Um, and talking to you guys has made me happy. I'm walking away with a smile on my face. I'm going to go grab another beer. And uh, I'm going to have a good week. I'm going to get my run in tonight. Even if it's just three, four miles, I'm going to get it in. Thank you all. See you, Larry. still here make sure you go check out the goku runners channel good stuff he releases content way more frequently than i do so you need to go check out his stuff